Good morning everyone, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations and today we are going to be making whale tails slash mermaid tails. Um, I did some bangles I think on my last live, this time I'm doing some pendants. Uh, we're doing three textured and three flat. Um, two are going to have curled ends and the other four are going to have jump rings. Um, where we're going to use our stencils that we got from Flat Wearable. Um, the link for them is in the description. Uh, what I'm going to be using today is uh, probably one of the patterns off of this template and definitely probably this side of the patterns, more of the longer elongated ones. Uh, but we'll give one of these a shot. Um, so if you hop on, say hi. Uh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Um, I think I have it set to where you need to be a subscriber to chat. Um, if you're just watching on your TV, hi. Um, if you like these videos, please leave us a thumbs up. So here's what I'm going to be using today. One, I'm going to be using my, my vice. This is a four inch vise, I think. Um, I got it for $10 at a, a second hand shop. It has this anvil section on it. Um, I cut a piece of brown board, i.e. paneling board. Uh, it's hard and dense and still actually really cheap in the US. Uh, but I cut it out to fit on my pad here so that I don't leave marks from my anvil. Uh, I will also be using it's fuzzy Jeremy I will also be using uh, this pair of um, what's the name snap ring pliers I cut off the ends pieces here just any big pliers I'm actually going to be using these for the most part these are the beadalon or beadsmith uh, graduated. I'm going to be using these mostly to make our loops. We're going to put them out of the way because that's last. I have two ball peen hammers here. I'm sorry, the microphone's way up here. Sorry, I forgot to put my mic on. There. You should be able to hear me now. What I've done to these is I've taken and I've actually ground them down to where there's more of a point so you can kind of see the shiny spot and then I've done the same to a smaller one you don't have to do this I just did it to get a more refined shape that I like for texturing um, so we have three to texture. Let's bring you over here. I have this big one and these two to texture. I like to texture them whenever they have the longer handles still. If you can do it while you have the whole handle, that would be great. Um, and then these three are going to be flat. And this one and this one, we're actually going to turn the handle over to use as where the necklace goes through. And then we'll drill these four for the uh, jump rings. But so I don't get confused, <laughs> can stay over there. Um, and let's start with this. I'm gonna try the big one. Oh, let's try the other one. I've never done this pattern. Oh, and I'm gonna be using these Sharpies. They are fine point Sharpies. Uh, they will actually write on here and if quickly you can rub them off Sorry quickly you can rub them off But if you leave it for a minute, it's gonna get harder and harder to rub off um, Where a lot of pens As soon as you touch them They're gone and this just buffs right off or you can take alcohol even and just wipe them off So let me bring you down here Let 
and try and change your angle so you're not so glary. So these templates are set up so that the handles should line up. That's pretty big. Hmm. We might do one of these smaller ones. I did not plan any of this out. This is be my last live video for a while. Look at this one, it looks cute. Okay, so I have my handle lined up here. Let's see. So I have my handle lined up right here. I have these even on both sides because it's not quite gonna fit. I'm just gonna hold it here. Kind of clean this up a little bit here. That'd be a cute looking tail. The thing I really like about these stencils is they're consistently accurate and I don't have to go back over them and continue messing with them. Um, so we're going to do these guys. Is there a big one? That is the biggest one. Tricky, tricky. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do here. I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to get this part here done. And I'm going to finish the rest off myself. So I'm trying to get this lined up. Don't like it. So we'll do this. I'm lining up the tip here on my edges and I'm making sure that I'm even up here so this is the part that we want there we go. and we got our tail I'm probably gonna take this down a little bit further There we go. Just give it a little bit more length. So this one's getting textured. I guess all three of these were supposed to get textured. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take this one off. And we're gonna do get these other three two set up. Um, Hmm. 
Sorry, I should have probably had a couple of these done, but it's live. All right. Normally, I'll just take these out and I'll take them right to the points. So what I'm looking mostly for here is I'm going to run these. I'm going to run this line here actually out to the edge. Same thing with this one. Just going to run this down line to my edge. Just want to try and keep them even. All right, so these three are getting textured. Let's get these three guys done and then we can get to cutting. So this one, I'm going to try and put the whole spoon in there. There we go. And get my points to line up here while we're the spoon and the, the pattern meet. There we go. One of the hardest parts is getting this centerpiece here center all the time. Sometimes it can just be a pain. Let's see, I missed this. I did enjoy making some of those after seeing one of your videos. Awesome. Yeah. It, uh, they're always a fun project. I do everything in batches, so sometimes it's a long time before I get back to make something. Um, I'm running out of space here. Um, I just made 107 bracelets. Um, just the metalwork for them. It, I was averaging 48 minutes on a set of, um, why am I having so much trouble here? Um, I was running 40, 48 minutes, I think, average on my, uh, on an, on 10. And I'm going to run this up a little bit higher. There we go. Just that little bit of height makes a pretty good difference. Get these guys separated. Again, I'm going to raise this up. Clean this one up a little bit. So those are good. Okay, what happened? Oh. <laughs> okay, these three are getting textured. These three are not. Wrap, wrap. Okay. Okay, so I just put some X's on these guys. Oops. Here we go. Put some X's here so I know which ones get cut off and which ones don't. Because 
I will more than likely have the opportunity to uh, cut off the wrong ones and then have to do another one. Okay, so for this part, um, as you nail, as you hammer this down, I'm going to bring you over here to the vise. Come on. Okay. So we're going to cut these out first, but whenever we're hammering, actually we can go ahead and probably hammer them out first. It'd be a little bit easier. Um, as you hammer down, the spoon is going to bend because as you're moving the metal, you're trying to hold down this piece and uh, you're going to end up are going to end up curling upwards so every once in a while you might have to turn it over and hammer them flat uh, for the most part this has uh, this microphone has been cutting out so all the really loud noises have been uh, not too bad for you guys but let me know in the comments if uh, it's too loud and I'll turn my microphone way down while I'm doing this all right going to headphone land that's what I tell my wife So I'm starting at the tips and then I work my way up. And oftentimes I'm using the glare from the light to see where my line is. And you don't have to follow your pattern. You can just go straight across if you want. The pattern's just there for whatever we cut it out. The other nice part about uh, about this, okay, good. Uh, the other nice part about the wood here is it allows you to um, actually get a deeper imprint. Because if I did this just on the metal, I'm getting a, an imprint, but it's not getting as deep. And I'm crouched right up on, pretty high up on the handle. Imagine you're, uh, there's a straight line coming out of your hammer. You just want to go right along that. See how it's curved up? So by adjusting where it's sitting, it's not banging me around. So if I'm trying to hit here, it's hitting the back of my hand really hard. So by just adjusting where it's at, you're getting a good, good hit. And then you can go back after. Uh, 
Um, so I've got some really nice marks on here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to my smaller one and I'm going to try filling in some of those little gaps. There's little spaces in here. You see the difference? The stuff that doesn't look or it looks like there's no mark there. That's just an empty spot that hasn't been hit yet. So I'm just working on taking those out. Just do it until you're happy with the results. And this one is getting flipped over. So I'm actually going to run this up the handle. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. And once we get this shined up, it's really gonna sparkle. And I think Yeah, because the textured ones, no matter what, you're going to have markings on the back. So um, go ahead and use just your flat anvil. Let's go with this one. And you just need to go enough to get the dimples that you want. I can't see my lines. And by going across, it kind of helps with that scale pattern look. And if you look at my wrist, oops, wrong one. 
you can see it's all in my wrist. I'm not moving my shoulder or really my elbow at all. It's all it's all right in my wrist. I'm letting the hammer do the work. Oop, wrong one again. Go up just a little bit higher. Get it flattened back out. And now I'm looking for those blank spots. And I'll use my little guy. You don't have to use a different size. I just do because I made it. So. And if you get a spot that's just kind of boring, really hammer it. This is this is your creation. All right. Go to the next one. Fortunately, this is the last one that needs I've had orders sometimes where there was 15 or 20 of these for a wedding party. All I can see is my tongue sticking out <laughs> as I'm trying to get this done. <laughs> Making faces. So as I'm hitting here, I can really feel it in my hand. And that's how you can really tell that it's moving. So I'm just gonna lean it back a little bit more so it stays solid because you just want to you just want to not beat up your hand I like it. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it up. See if I can keep you at an angle here. Because now we're gonna do our cut work. Um, I normally use a 3 aught blade, but I have, is it a 3 aught in here? Yep, I put the 2 aught up. So I always, I keep these little test tubes that have my blades in them. So the one that's in my saw right now that's the one that's laying on the counter or wherever you want to put it. Um, sometimes I've thought I've had a three in here and I've had an eight dot and I go pink <laughs> as soon as I touch it. So uh, just a little tip. Um, if you just have the packages, um, leave the package out um, or you can write it down on a little sticker or something. Um, uh, 
Uh, all right. Can you guys see? As long as the saw doesn't get in the way. All right, I can do that without hitting you. I'm gonna put on my glasses that I can barely see out of. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put on my visor. I love this thing. Just sits on your nose like, like a pair of glasses. And same thing as before, I always put my saw blade up against my my block here, just to get it started. Let's see, Kathy Mills says, okay, there we go. Okay, so if you annealed the spoon and soften the metal, wouldn't it be easier to texture? So, yes and no. Um, with the silver plate, you want, you don't want to put, I try to not put heat to it unless I have to. Um, some pieces of the silverware have a lot of wear on them and sometimes the silver will just, um, burn up and then you have to deal with just the base metal. Um, this way it's easy enough. I mean, this is a small, a small ball peen hammer. Um, it's not tiny like this little guy. Um, yeah, this one's just too tiny, but, uh, I tried to not anneal anything really, unless it's sterling. The sterling I'm a lot more cautious of, uh, whereas these, these bend and texture easy enough, but if you are having problems with it, try and heat it up. Um, just make sure you keep the flame away from it and slowly heat it so you're not burning off that layer. Oh, I need my wax. And remember, the line is just a guide. Sometimes whenever you're here, I can't see my line. Just a little paintbrush to wipe those shavings away. We'll get you back on track. towards the back of my block. Try not to hit the camera. So there we got our whale tail. And if you want, you can texture this with the hammer some more to kind of take down that edge if you wanted to. Uh, I'm going to clean it up and I like to leave them like this because it leaves you nice, really good shape. Um, but 
like I said, this is your creation, so make it any way you want. We will be taking the points off though. There's that one. Two more to go. These have a little different shape. This one's a definitely a different base metal. It's a little harder to cut. I don't know if this visor is in the links in the description. I'll have to check. blade is getting loose. A lot of times that'll come from me pushing too hard or going too fast. I like the angle. I have to remember this spot. Broke the blade. If you haven't replaced the blade on these, I think you can see it. Let's see if I can get it to focus past. Um, the teeth need to be going in the down direction. So you grab a blade and f you can feel with your finger which way it catches. So I'm going to flip this over because we want the teeth to cut whenever you're pulling down. It goes in between the slats here. So it'll go in there and you're pushing it against the table so it gets nice and taut. You don't want it too tight. And then I'm just going to go back and retrace, just bring the saw right back. Okay, I fixed it. <laughs> Definitely a new blade. We're cruising now. I think I'm going to take it out. You can see how one side is longer than the other. Yep, 
So you can take that out. You can either go back and recut it. That's more even, and we'll do that cleanup with our Dremel. Once it gets a little harder to, to saw, just add some more wax. This is my last order before headed to be with my wife in New York City. I'm not sure how long we'll be down there, but it'll be for the first part of her uh, chemo. So it could be another three, four weeks. So until then, um, the shop will be closed. But I am going to have some time to work on uh, finishing editing some of the videos. So these are the guys that aren't textured. I got to cut them out and then we'll move on to the next step. Yep, you can definitely do that. Um, I started out with a hacksaw, and I just took a hacksaw to it. Um, and then I started using my sawzaw, and that worked for a little bit. And then I got the jeweler's saw, and with the amount of cleanup work that I um, don't have to do with this, just had me I just changed over to cutting them out for me it's easy enough um, but I know lots of people just do it with a Dremel like you said just cut off the tip or the front and then take the Dremel and just cut it using a diamond wheel or, or something Yeah, it was pretty sketchy with my Saza cutting this thing out. I'd have it clamped up in my vise. <laughs> I'd have it clamped up in my vise. And the thing would catch every once in a while and just 
absolutely mangle the piece. And whenever I first started my dogs and cats, uh, they were started. I did most of them with hacksaw. I didn't have a jeweler saw for probably a couple of years. So that's the finished piece here. So this is one of the ones that we modified. I'm going to go down a little bit further to match this side here, hopefully. <laughs> Lot softer base metal saws just flying through. trying to move it and saw at the same time and bound up on me. Slide it to the back. Last one. Remember to watch out for your fingers. These saw blades are, are thin and they will just slice right through you. See how it bound up on me there? There we go. It looks pretty even. All right. So I'm using a 180 grit drum, and then we're gonna go to a diamond bit after this.
if you have a tumbler, a tumbler will help smooth that out. So if you just get it down to where it's rounded. So I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me see if I can get you zoomed in here. There we go. So that's the saw marks that were taken out. So this is the side that I started taking them out. Let's see. Sorry, everything's backwards. So we're starting to smooth it out here. That's just what we're trying to do. I tuned in late. Do you have a template you trace out for the tails? Is there a difference in shape between the whale tail and the mermaid? So yes. Um, let me unzoom this. And um, I use these templates that I got from Flat Wearable. Flatwearable.net. Uh, their link is in the description. But this has different shapes. And you match up your spoons with them. So this is your whale tail. And then this is more your mermaid tail. Mainly it's the, the length. And then you get into the fancy shapes. I forgot I was going to do one of these in the longer. Yep. Oh well. I forgot. Uh, so, and that makes it a lot easier. And then it is a template. So if you want to adjust something, um, the beginning of the, vid of the live, I adjusted a couple of the points because it just, the spoon didn't quite fit the mold, the pattern. So I adjusted them. Um, so let's go back to getting this ground out. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely can see that. Um, for me, it's the super intricate things. Um, I don't even think I could pull up a picture fast enough. Um, I have some pieces that I've done. So here's an actual mermaid. Come on, focus. There we go. Um, and this is, I put a, a brass plate on the back, but I curved her out and all those little, little pieces of hair. And then this Lion King, Simba and Mufasa, those little pieces. And these aren't super hard. I did one that was, um, it's actually cut out the word in cursive love on it. That thing took me at least an hour and a half to cut out. And I needed, I definitely needed these guys. Uh, it was excruciating, even for my brain. Come on, get under there. Okay, get these guys cleaned up. And once I get the, the cut marks out of here, um, then I'll go and 
make my uh, I'll take the edges off okay so now I've got these smooth I'm gonna go over the top edge same thing on the other side and you don't want to feel a lip on either side so that's as much as I can get with this blade here or with this bit so I'm going to put that up there and we'll move on to the next one. Oh, sorry I'll shut off autofocus So this is one that we cut, so a little trick, yeah I really loved, I did a giraffe, I did a giraffe that had a whole bunch of tiny little cutouts for the pattern on its neck and I was like I have to add brass to the back of that and that giraffe just popped out, it was one of my favorite pieces that I've done with the brass. Oh, what I was saying here, um, where we cut off that extra little bit, it's shaped a little different. Same thing on this side, if you hold your um, your bit at an angle that will help smooth that out the whole piece instead of just possibly getting just an indention from the piece but whenever you do that you also run the risk of going over the top so I try and always do it on the back side just in case I slip So I got them straightened out. And get all these saw marks out of here. And now's a good time if you want to like make your make your curves a little deeper. It's your creation. You can make it anything you want. And the nice part is, if you don't tell anybody, no one will know. My favorite thing is if, uh, if somebody has to ask what it is, it's art. So you charge double. <laughs> smooth smooth this has that hard edge smooth smooth yeah <laughs> yep When I got my uh, my hanging rotary tool, it's not a Fordham, so it's one of the Chinese ones that I modified to accept all the Fordham uh, cable and shaft. Um, if I didn't have to, uh, if I didn't have to use the piece. To take the bit out every time, I'd, I'd use it more. But this is so consistent for the speed and everything. It's just a lot easier for me to get through this. So 
I actually got those off of Google. Um, I was, if you search for silhouettes, um, pretty much if it's a silhouette, you can put it in a Word document, adjust the size. Um, so you're going to import picture into your Word document and then change the size. Um, and once you change the size, um, it will actually print out that size. Um, I do have a video on it. It's from a long time ago. Uh, but is it right here? So what I did was I take the same picture, sorry, let me get it in the frame, there we go. This is the same turtle. The only difference is that I made this one one and one point whatever inches. This one here is one inch. This one here is a little bit smaller. You can adjust them wider, like these guys down here are wider until you get one that fits within your spoon and what I would do is I take my spoon put it behind it his love on here I know love's in the drawer. This is one that I did. This was another really tedious pain. Every single one of those white spots, you have to drill a hole and cut out. That was, that was crazy. And this is the giraffe that I used. So just imagine all of the black as the brass. And the rest of that um, is the spoon. But I put the spoon behind it and you can see where the pattern needs to be. So let me see if I can prop this up here. And then what you do is once you find the one that fits, so let's try this tree of life here. Oop. Come on, it's hard to do one handed. So say you wanted to make this tree of life. You'll hold it up to the light and make sure that it's the size that you want. Why isn't this working? Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to do that sometime. So once you get it to the size that you like, there we go. You can see it on the spoon pretty much. So that's the size that I want it. I'll cut out this piece or what I've started doing recently is I've taken and I use my shipping labels because they're sticky. And once I know that I want this size, then I'll take and I'll print out a couple of them on that. Um, Whereas using the, I was mod podging these onto the spoon once I cut them out. Um, but if they, uh, what would happen is they'd get kind of stuck sometimes and a piece would end up flipping up. 
so I couldn't um, zoom back in here. Come on, camera. You can do it. Come on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There we go. We're back. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to make another one of those. Um, it's always fun. Tedious, but fun. Uh, but the silhouette part, if you search on Google, just search uh, silhouette, animal silhouettes, or mermaid silhouette. Um, getting ahead of myself here. Um, if you find one that you like, you just have to make sure that um, you're, what you're seeing is actually the negative part because the black is going to be the part that you cut out um, normally. I think for the giraffe, yeah, the giraffe, the, the black was, or the white was cut out and the black was left. Um, because you're dealing with the silhouette part, um, you have to, you have to be able to get that, um, the silhouette to fit and actually look the way you want. And sometimes if you're cutting those pieces out, if it's not a solid piece like that tree, you could cut through and make it to where you can't cut. Um, you'll make just a giant piece come out. I was trying to do the middle portion of the bit um, because I use the ends mostly. So I can just kind of use this whole whole drum because these points will definitely kill your drums. Um, you can also do this on your uh, belt sander. I don't like that shape. There we go. That's better. Alright. You want to be careful whenever you're getting in here with your drum because you will start to put divots in there. And we're going to get that part with the diamond bit. Just make sure we're smooth here. Alright, one more and then we'll go to the diamond bit. Yeah, it's a great question, Kathy. Uh, there is a video of me doing it. Um, you might have to search for it, but if you go to my main channel page um, and just like go to videos and then scroll back way back, just go down the list. Um, but just. Word allows me to uh, 
change the size really easy and you're changing the print size sometimes it looks really weird on the page but whenever you print it out it's right and that's why I had to change up the pattern size because I don't quite know and I don't measure all the time for the uh, Um, I don't measure the spoons because I don't know exactly which ones I'm going to be using. Does this guy fits? Does it fit in the smallest one? No. I'm going to go one up. So I'm trying to match this middle piece here, and that's the one I want. So I have three that are this shape. And again, I always like to work from the back. This is just a real light pressure. Because you're just trying to get those lines out of there. And then, again, with these, be really careful. You're going around the edge. It's very easy for these to rotate around on you. You're just taking that sharp edge off. You can see that that was this size to the next size it's a really fine point so I'm just gonna grab a, a triangle shape bit so I can use the thick part or the skinny part oh see that that was from my uh, my drum sander must have slipped off and I didn't catch it So again, just, this is just really, really light. We're just taking out those lines. And then take off our burr. last one and then we can cut and bend the two over and then we'll cut and drill the holes for the other ones and then we'll toss everything in the tumbler
turn off the right machine. <laughs> okay. All right, on to the easier parts. So I'm gonna get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna put my my cutters in here. These are 14 inch bolt cutters. I just put them in here. And now I have so you can go that way. Nice solid platform. I can move it around. So, this one has an X, this one has an X, this one's curled, one textured, okay, so these guys get cut. So because we're we're gonna put jump rings on these, it's uh, the most blades I've ever broken. I know I have it right here. Um, I broke twenty something blades working on that one piece. There it is. the love it looks big on here but once you're cutting out you're cutting out all of the white parts and all of those little tiny turns and loop-de-loops I was constantly breaking blades it was just horrible I've done a lot of these dogs and the heart is the you cut out the black and then I was putting brass on the back so the dog is actually brass and then I was using a tiny piece of the silverware to make the heart and then soldered that in place uh, let's see scorpions spiders this is what I was talking about a bit of focus so what's getting cut out of your spoon is the black in the scorpion so these little tiny spots in here you have to make sure that you don't uh, you're gonna have to edit that to be able to make so that it comes out right otherwise it's just it's just too hard to do and have enough material What are some ideas of what you do with a sawed off spoon bowl? Do you make little solder bowls like hearts and stars? So I haven't um, done a whole lot of that. I used some, what was that? Oh, it's my mask. Um, I've used these a lot of times for wind chimes. Uh, you can do them like this and they look like little ghosts and they cling nice just put a hole in them uh, toss them in the tumbler um, a very low low effort piece uh, just drilling the hole toss them in the tumbler and then they're ready to go they do actually sound nice and whenever you get a whole bunch of different sizes and shapes and patterns they make nice mobile kind of things um, that's an X. That's an X. Um, I try not to throw anything away. Even like, like this piece here was a dog. And you can kind of see where my fingers taken off the top. Um, I was thinking bird. So I can still use this tiny little piece and turn it into a bird. See if I could draw backwards. Actually, I can't draw backwards. OK. 
Can I draw forward? <laughs> Come on. That's a beak. That's a beak into the head and around. And then we'll put a little eyeball in there. There we go. So a little birdie. And you can turn this into an earring using this top piece up here. So you have little bird earrings. And this is actually the dog's tail and this is the the face right here this is the face the head of the dog so even your tiniest little scraps i don't throw anything away sometimes i don't see it for a couple of years but i don't throw anything away uh, so these guys are getting cut off we're just going to use them with jump rings so you don't have to make a line i like to leave about this much. Um, it's enough to be above the tail and still enough to let people know that it was a spoon. So, and I always keep the part that I want uh, to keep on my side of the, uh, the cutters. So, So same thing with this guy. So there's that. And here's the two that we're gonna wrap around. So this one and this guy. And I'm using these pliers. Always leave yourself a little bit extra. So this is what I'm looking at. I'm gonna cut it like right here. Just to make sure I have enough. So even these pieces here, I save these. And if I have, like whenever I'm doing a few of these, I'll save these in sets or in pairs. And these can become perfect little earrings. Uh, this one's a lot thicker, so we need to make sure we leave enough room for that. And what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at how much material it's going to take to wrap around this and come back to the base. So from my point of view, I think I need to be right about there. So a little bit longer than the first one. See, it's one side of a nice pretty earring. All right, so I'm just gonna take these over to the sander here real quick. Sorry about the mess. That's my one inch belt sander that I got from Harbor Freight. Well, tail down. Don't want to get dust in my mask. needed to cut these two.
hat. Okay, so here's what I've done. I've just rounded off the tips. I do have my all my scratches in here from the belt. So I'm just going to go quickly over that with the Dremel with the drum. Clean up those edges so they're nice and smooth. Actually, what we need to do first. Oh wait, no, these two we can. Sorry. This doesn't have to be rounded very much uh, because we are going to the back of the piece, but you don't want any sharp edges. So for these guys, what we're going to do is I'm just going to buff them out a little bit here for you. So we got our pieces here. This loop only needs to be big enough for a chain to go through. So I'm going to use my medium piece here and I'm just clamping it and then flipping it over. If it's not flipping over for you easy, bring it over to your vise or your, your ample. The nylon mallet. A lot of times you can bend it over. Sometimes I'll end up doing this on the point. Or you can put it in your vise here. Get the pliers and bring it around. So Oh, sorry. I got it turned around. You can kind of see where it is in proportion. There, that's a better shot. So I don't want it to go around anymore. I'm going to hit this. I'm going to tap it down. And this is where my other pliers come in handy. Just to make sure that I have enough room to put a necklace through. And then I can flip it over to this side and I want to hit more back here towards the back. Check it for light going through. So it is touching right now. And it's up above it. So where's a chain, string, wire, anything? <laughs> Here we go. So now we'll do the big one. I'm just going to start out in here. My hands hurt from the last two days of making all those bracelets. This one, I'm going to start the loop bigger and then go down smaller if I can. So I've got kind of a curve going on there.
And there we go. And the rest of these we're just going to tap with our punch. Make sure you're on the top. Depending on the size of your jump ring. Uh, just depends on where, how far down you want to go. See if I can stop it from zooming in every time. I've been trying to look up more often so I don't get lost because I can see what I'm doing perfectly but I gotta remember that you guys want to see too all right let's come over to the drill press one two three four grab my wax Sorry. wax on the bit and just keeping kind of a steady pressure on it whenever the shavings come out start getting really long I just kind of lift up a little bit so they can clear and it's just a light pressure and if you see your bit stop just lift it up and uh, put some wax on it and generally it will go right through all right let's bring you back up here you don't want to see me okay let's get this on the back of these there's that little burr that's what we're taking off right now so we're gonna clean up that hole and also at the same time go around and clean up our saw marks or our uh, sander marks remember no sharp edges done right, get that last little burr off of there and that is all set if you want I know with the bracelets a lot of times I'll take a bit that will fit and I'll go back through the hole that we cut out just to make sure no piece of metal is still in there and I always go from the back side so we don't scratch it You 
go up here. Bink. Focus. And then these guys will get jump rings after they come out of the tumbler. So we did it. That's the last of my special orders before we leave. Uh, the size drill bit is tiny. Um, a 332nd bit. Um, I like to use the cobalt bits, but this time I didn't have them. I just have the high speed one for this. Uh, the cobalt bits are a lot stronger. They'll cut through most stainless steel. And so they'll last a lot longer on the silverware. And with a little bit of wax, they cut through this bit. Um, it was taking me 47 or 48 minutes to do 10 bracelets. Um, worth of metal so it's 40 hole or yeah 40 holes and I did 107 bracelets so 214 something like that holes and I didn't break a bit um, sometimes you get one and you just start to go down and pink bit breaks off but the cobalt bits I just love them um, see any other questions you got for me before I log off check in the chat um, like I said earlier I will be out of the shop I won't be able to do anything in the shop for the foreseeable future my wife's down in New York City going through treatment for her disease um, and so I gotta go down there and be with her because that's where I want to be. I will be working on videos while we're down there. I have tons of video footage, so hopefully I'll still keep stuff coming out. But as far as stuff in the shop and any lives, um, I probably won't be doing any of those unless it's just through the laptop. And I might have a, uh, a chat, just a day for everybody to ask questions. I'll post it a couple days in advance on Facebook. Um, Hopefully I'll get my Instagram back soon and uh, I'll post it on here too. Just letting everybody know a little in advance. So I don't see any more questions. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and all of your questions. I love the questions and talking with you guys. Uh, it makes this go faster. Uh, we're one hour and one hour, 41 minutes. Um, if I wasn't live, I could easily have all those done in in an hour, if not a little, oh, well, probably an hour because all the saw work. But um, yeah, I just do everything at the same time, same thing over and over and over again, and things just start to add up, and then you end up with a drawer full of stuff that you don't know what's in there, and you take it out, and you have enough to do a show or a small show. All right, so. Thank you guys for subscribing, uh, watching, and going on this journey with me. I appreciate it, and uh, I will see you guys all very soon again. And 